Hey guys, my name is Stephanie Farron. I'm the Technology Facilitator at Butler High School and this quick tutorial is how to create unique curriculum inside of the non-credit bearing side of Edgenuity to use in your class for remediation, enrichment work as a unit or a lesson or standalone extra practice. So the first thing you want to do is you want to log into your Edgenuity. You want to make sure in the top right hand corner that you're in the non-credit bearing side. So in this case mine says David W. Butler High School but it doesn't say credit bearing. Once you're here, you're going to click the Courses tab and Manage Courses. You're going to want to find the course that you want to edit. You can sort these courses by subject area um, and then by the title of the course if you'd like. So I'm going to look up a Foundations course. One of the things you're going to notice in the non-credit bearing side is that there may be the entire course Foundations of Math 1, but there may also be uh, the course broken down by content, um, for example, just one uh, lesson or unit. We also can create courses that are exam only, which are great for additional practice for your students, and I'll show you how to do those too in a separate video. So what you'll want to do is you want to select the course that you want to edit, and then from there you'll want to click Customize. You'll notice that the Customize pops up and it says you can either create a new course or modify this course without creating a copy. We want to make sure that we are creating a new course every time because we want to make sure that we're not messing up the original course for other people. When we do that, it's going to ask us to create a, a unique course name with a pencil, so we'll click it. I always recommend that you put um, your first name um, in front of the course just so that way it's a quick and easy way to find the course back later and then if any of us are looking in the, um, the list of courses we know who's been editing the course, hit save. And then the next thing you have is you have all the content which you can expand as, as needed. So if you'll notice, it tells you the total number of hours and minutes, lessons and activities that are available in this course. Remember, this is the entire course. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how you can enable prescriptive testing. So if a student has already mastered a particular content, then that will exempt them out of the lesson. Um, as a teacher, because we're on the non-credit bearing side, you can open up each of these to see what uh, they are doing. If you decide that this is something that you do not feel the students need to be taught, you can turn it off. Okay, um, you can do this at any time throughout the class on the non-credit bearing side because remember they cannot get credit. So you could be working with a student and then decide, you know what, yeah the pre-test said they needed to take representing relationships but as I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a student I see they actually know this so I can come in, edit the course, turn it off and then change it for either that individual student or for all the students. So just know that because this is non-credit bearing, you can make these changes all day long. In this case, I'm going to leave everything open. I'm not going to turn anything off. I'm going to hit publish the course um, so that it's there, and then it's going to proceed to customization. When I click customization, and that is another button option in the courses, you can see the threshold, the passing thresholds for these courses. Well, now we have uh, 60 as the passing threshold, so we might want to go ahead and change that. On the right hand side is the course weights. They need to equal 100%. Um, right now it looks like there's a project in this course. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and then I'll go back in that course and turn it off um, so that it is not weighted and it does not count. I don't need a student to do a project in remediation or enrichment. Um, and so therefore I probably want to weight something a little bit higher so that way it will uh, equal 100%. A couple things here in assessment options, we can enable spiral review. Spiral review literally means that if the student is progressing and then fails a quiz, it will throw them back into a previous lesson to have them learn it again. Um, I don't necessarily recommend this in enrichment because it's just going to frustrate the students, but that is spiral review. You can allow them to save and exit quizzes. You can hide or view the questions. Um, same things here. Most of these I don't ever change. Um, automatic progression is one that you may or may not want to turn on. Um, automatic progression, and it shows you right here what happens, that your students will get stuck if they fail a quiz or a test. Actually, it's mostly the test. Um, you can turn on automatic progression so that even if they fail the test, they can be progressed through. You may or may not want to do that. You can change the grading method. 
Most of the time I just leave it right here, automatic with a grade. If you're working with students that are lower, you may want to just make it a completion grade. Okay. Um, you can turn it on so that there's a review before exams or tests are open. Most of the time I just leave it right here. Um, I can also turn these off. So basically what happens with the test activities review and exam activities review is the students take a mock test um, and get the answers and the feedback and then they take the real test. Turning this off means they finish the unit, they just take the test and they move on. So it's up to you if you want to turn those on and off. Um, the, the important things back here, one, allowing free movement allows the student to move all the way through the course on their own, whether or not they, not a linear progression where they have to complete the quiz to get to the next activity. So normally I never turn this on, but depending on how you're doing your enrichment, you may. The two things I do recommend you turn on is one, enabling pre-testing. That means before each unit at the beginning of the course, this uh, gives the kids a, a, a test, I think it's 50 questions at the beginning, um, and it literally will, if the student gets the question right, it will turn off the unit assignment for that child. So that's why I leave all the units on to begin with and I enable that pre-testing. Again, these are the thresholds, um, minutes and uh, how high they have to score. So you can adjust that as well because remember this is not for credit. You cannot do this in a credit course. Um, you can set the time limits for their assessments. Um, target dates are important, start dates and target dates. I do recommend this um, because what it will do is it will create um, a timeline of activities that students have to finish daily, weekly, monthly um, to be ahead or behind. And then it's going to give them a color graph, either red and orange if they're behind or green and blue if they're on pace or ahead. I also turn on this prescriptive testing option because that allows them to take that prescriptive test at the beginning of their, act, of their course to see how that looks. Once you finish all this, you hit Submit All Changes. It will ask you if you're going to make changes to the students or not. Now remember, you can make changes as you go. Um, right now, I have no students assigned to this, so I don't have to worry about this. But if I did have students assigned to this class and I wanted to adjust all their changes because I goofed up, I would click Update and apply it to all of them or Update to only a selected group or a selected individual. You can do this on an individual student. You can do this for the entire course. If I click this middle one and I had a student enrolled, it would tell me I made changes to students. So like right now it says I made no changes to any students because there were no students in this class. The next thing I want to do is I want to check this course. So I'm going to click the students and the manage students and then I'm going to select my account. I'm going to add this course to me so that way I can go in as a student and mock this course to see how it looks. So I know it was math in ninth grade. I'm going to click down and find my my course. Um, I think it was on the second page here, and then assign it just to me. So this is me assigning individually to just one student. And then once I have that, I am going to log out completely of Edgenuity, and I'm going to go back in. Instead of selecting um, the educator, I'm going to select the student. And then as a teacher, I can log in with my username and password and the student login and see the student view. So announcements pop up on the side. As a teacher, you can add announcements. These, remember I talked to you about the red and green lines. That's showing if the student's ahead or behind. These are all the courses I've assigned to myself. Here's the one I just assigned. Um, actually, I have two. So I'm going to click this one. And I'll see I've got the prescriptive test. I can actually mock all the way through it, walk all the way through of it like a student to see how it looks. So that's how you'll look at it as a student versus a teacher. Good luck.